Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on Stargirl Season 2, and they've just released the first proper official trailer for it, a minute and a half long, roughly, something like that. So let's watch it, and then we'll talk about everything. The ISA are done. I beat Grundy. And Cindy Berman probably got crushed when the dish caved in. The others could- What others? Court, Dragon King is dead, Tigress and Sportsmaster, they're locked up. We're the Justice Society of America. We can't quit. I've got a responsibility as Stargirl to stay vigilant. You got a responsibility in school. I think you're looking for trouble, Court. You have to decide if putting on that mask is worth messing up everything else in your life. Being a superhero doesn't mean that the rest of your life takes a back seat. It's about finding a balance. The staff chose me for a reason that goes beyond the Injustice Society. Who are you? I'm Green Lantern's daughter. Who is this villain from the old days? Why is he in Blue Valley? It's something very bad. We're never gonna stop fighting to protect the world from people like you. Don't you teach these children any manners? Stargirl. New episodes start August 10th. Free next day, only on the CW app. So yeah, that was very impressive. I'm very much looking forward to it. Now, as the trailer does say, it's an August 10th release date. So about... About two months, you know, two months, just under two months. That's the best way to put it. And it will actually be slotting into where The Flash currently is, which is on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Um, though The Flash Season 7 ends on July 20th. So there will be a few weeks after The Flash ends without anything in that time slot from what we know. Though Superman and Lois will still be on as I think their finale is either on the week Stargirl premieres or the week after when it's Stargirl Episode 2, something like that. But of course, throughout the video, be sure to let me know your various opinions in the comment section down below on that trailer. What caught your eye? What are you looking forward to the most? Everything like that. I'm very curious to hear what you guys uh, like in that trailer and looking forward to in season two. And of course, if you're going to enjoy the video and that trailer got you excited, want to drop a like on the video to show your support for the video, the channel, and just Stargirl. Now, based off the trailer, it does seem that we pick up, maybe not like right after the conclusion of season one, but somewhere soon after it. Because we can see, I think it's mainly Rick, aka Owlman. It seems that maybe Yolanda is on his side, but it's mainly him making the point to Courtney and potentially Beth, but let's just say Courtney, that their job is done really as superheroes and that the ISA or the Injustice Society are, are either locked up in the case of like Tigress and Sportsmaster or dead like Dragon King and potentially Icicle. Um, it's very important to, and uh, Brainwave. The thing I need to mention is that I think it was I think it was Jeff Johns, who's the showrunner and creator, said that I, th I think he the only person he would confirm that died was Brainwave. So he, Brainwave is dead. He he confirmed Brainwave's dead, but he wouldn't confirm necessarily the Dragon King, Icicle, and stuff died, even though we saw Dragon King get uh, Dragon King get like stabbed in the back, potentially in a very lethal spot, and of course we saw Icicle get hit by a truck and he uh, uh, you know explode into a million ice cubes, but. Maybe he can regenerate, we don't know, but from what we know, Brainwave is the only confirmed dead character. But yeah, as we see at other points in the trailer, it's mainly with Courtney, the superhero or Justice Society or JSA side of their lives is becoming their their life in general and leaving little to no room for other things. With Courtney at the very least, the main thing is getting shafted to the side is school, which is a concern for her parents. Now, one thing I will note is that when we go back to that scene where it's like, all of them in their superhero attire and Rick's in the Owlman telling them stuff. Beth's goggles are fixed. Now we knew that Beth's goggles were going to get fixed or there's going to be some sort of new goggles coming in because it's such an important thing to the character of Dr. Midnight. It's like Owlman's hourglass being broken or Courtney's you know, cosmic staff just exploding and not being there. Like it's a, such an important thing that sort of makes him that character. So I'm going to, I'm interested to see how they fix them. Um, I'm, it, I think it's not that hard because it is just technology. Maybe there's something at the JSA headquarters that helps him out with that. Um, but yeah, I don't know if she's just going to start with new goggles or it's something that happens in the first few episodes 
and uh, she gets them. And in regards to the first few episodes, the first five episodes for this season, from what we know, are called Summer School. So it's just the, they're all called Summer School, and it's chapters one through to five. So episode one is chapter one, episode five is chapter five, and you can fill in the rest. Now, we don't have Summer School down here in Australia. I think it's really just an American thing. Maybe it's done in Canada as well. But from what I know, it's pretty much where you go to school during the summer holidays and you pretty much catch up on work you missed in order to pass uh, so you don't have to repeat a particular school year or it's something along those lines. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think I'm on the right track there. Uh, so it wouldn't be too surprising if all or at least most of the new JSA members are forced to do summer school. I could see Beth being the only one who doesn't have to do it. I think she could, you know, scrape by in school even if she commits almost all of her time to being Dr. Midnight. Now, one thing um, that having the summer school thing would help with as well is that they were filming during COVID. So I'm assuming that like summer school, there's a lot less kids there. And with the COVID rules and stuff like that, it would have made it much easier. If you look back at Stargirl season one, whenever they walked down the hallway, it was just filled with, you know, bustling, bustling kids. There was always kids everywhere, big, you know, uh, you know, crowds and stuff like that. You couldn't do that during COVID filming. Um, so maybe that helps with it. But one of the bigger moments in the trailer that's definitely catching people's eyes is the moment in which we see the Green Lantern battery or just the Green Lantern activate in the Whitmore household. Of course, we know it was there last season. It was in the bag because Courtney took it from the JSA headquarters. And this is where we meet Jade or Jennifer Lynn Hayden, who is the daughter of Alan Scott, aka the original Green Lantern. So I'm interested to see how they handle the backstory with him, whether we see him or not. And just how they handle Jade as well, because she could be a fairly interesting character. Now, she does come off as like antagonistic, um, you know, here because she's fighting Courtney. But she is just sort of taking back what she feels, I guess, is rightfully hers. And she, and we can see that she has a Green Lantern ring. She even makes like a construct to sort of push Courtney away. I'm not too sure what it is. It looks like a, a shield. It doesn't look like she makes a fist. It looks like it's just like almost like a blast of green energy. Um, and I wouldn't be too surprised if maybe she uses the ring and she's able to track the Lantern battery um, you know, through it. One of the big questions is whether she actually moves to Blue Valley with her family or it's like she's solo. So she's riding solo, she's by herself and she's been pretty much been on the lookout for the Lantern Battery. Maybe she even went to the JSA HQ and it wasn't there and now it's led her to Blue Valley. Um, but I'm intrigued to see how they handle her, whether she's a potential student at Blue Valley or she's just hanging around the town. We'll have to wait and see. Now, Cindy Berman, aka Shiv, obviously last season we saw that she survived, that she was uh, looking through and finding Eclipso, and we see her walking around here with a bit of a strut, and I wonder if it's with Eclipso possessing her, because she seems like she's very confident, potentially you could argue looks a bit more sinister and darker, or maybe she's just in alliance with him. So maybe Eclipso isn't possessing her, maybe influencing her, but overall it's just like an alliance. We don't really get too much of a, you know, idea of that from the trailer we do we do see her fighting with her stepmother who i was surprised to see her to be completely honest because like dragon king is supposed to be dead from what we know who knows if he returns um so i didn't think that would go back to her but i guess that's cindy's home and that's where the stepmother is so i guess it makes sense but i wonder how long the stepmother will be staying alive i wonder if sydney uh cindy might be like hey don't need you anymore bye bye now in regards to eclipso we don't see him in the trailer we did have that poster that came out a while ago um, in regards to why he's not in the trailer, I have a feeling this trailer specifically is only footage from the first or maybe two, like the first episode or maybe the first two episodes and majority of it will be from the first episode. So maybe his big reveal and like his physical form that we see in the poster is at the end of episode two or three or four or something. So it would be silly to show it in the trailer, even though we've already seen it in a poster, though it could be argued that he is technically in the trailer if he is like overly influencing Cindy or possessing her and maybe that's his role in the trailer. But um, yeah, won't be, you know, we know he's coming. We've seen the poster. We know he looks cool. So there's no, no need to worry. But in regards to other antagonizing forces or, you know, potential villains, we do get to meet the Shade, who we did see last season, but it was with like just like the back of him because they hadn't cast the actor yet. And we don't really get too much of a sense of what he is up to outside of Pat seeming to be overly worried about him being back around and calling him like a classic villain and stuff like that. Though it could be argued that maybe Pat's worry at certain parts in the trailer could be referring to Eclipso, but as I said, this seems to be from earlier in the season, so I don't know if Eclipso's presence in, like, in regards to Blue Valley and Pat knowing about it would be out there at that point, so I'm going to have to say he's talking about the shade, but it's hard to be 100% sure. 
But I am intrigued to see the Shay this season as well as just the other remaining ISA members like Tigress and Sportsmaster. We know they're coming back. Uh, Shade may play like an anti-hero role, sort of how he is in the comics in his home city. Uh, is it Opal City? I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, I, I wonder how they're going to go with that because like there's a, even that scene where all the, all the JSA members and Pat and stuff are there talking to him. It doesn't seem too overly confrontational. So maybe they're wondering why he's black, back in Blue Valley and maybe he's saying that he's changed or something like that. I don't know. I, I'm intrigued to see whether he actually is an, like an over-the-top villain or maybe he plays that grey area throughout the season. Um, obviously, it's something they have to keep our eyes out for. But the last big thing from the trailer to talk about is that we do get to meet Thunderbolt, aka the genie from the uh, the pink, not the blue pen. That'd be pretty boring. The pink pen. So the pink pen was this big mystery last season. Who's going to possess it? When's the genie going to show up? It's happening in this season now. The interesting thing is that he he appears in front of Mike here. So Mike's on like a newspaper route, which we he had last season. But we see him on the newspaper route and the genie appears here. So I have to assume that Mike has the pen with him, maybe. I'm not too sure. However, the big question mark with this is that we know that Jakeem Thunder will be showing up this season. He's being cast. So I wonder what's happening there. Does Mike potentially possess the pen first and then it goes over to Jakeem because it's a better connection? Or is Jakeem with Mike there at that point as well? We just don't see him on screen. We know that they were friends at school. I know. I'm, I'm intrigued to see what happens there. But there is also a shot of Mike in Pat's workshop with the other new JSA members as if they're like on a briefing or training or something. So I'm not too sure if they're going to have Mike wield the pen for a bit before Jakeem takes over or if Mike is just in the workshop as part of the team without any superhero identity. Maybe he's just like Pat's protege and Pat's assistant if you want to call it. We'll have to wait and see. But it is very cool to see Thunderbolt. I think he looks awesome. I think he looks great, especially because that's a daytime scene. And that's usually the hardest ones to do. And I think if he looks great in daytime, that means he's to look even better at nighttime as well. And the cool thing is that he is voiced by Jim Gaffigan. So that should provide some uh, some comedic stuff, especially some back and forth, depending on who he's with. And also he's he should have you know interacted with Pat in the past as well. So I'm sure there might be some funny exchanges between a Jim Gaffigan voiced Thunderbolt genie and Pat Dugan as well. That should be pretty funny. But overall, I mean, I was already excited for this season to come in. I knew I was looking forward to it. I'm just happy to see footage and the footage just made me get even more excited. And I thought I couldn't get any more excited. So they nailed it. I'm looking forward to it. As I said, August 10th, we'll probably get one more trailer, like one more proper trailer and then little TV spots maybe um, as we head up to August 10th when it comes out. Um, but if it was just this and that's all the promotion they did and that's all I saw before the season started, I'd be happy because they've, they've, I've bought my ticket. They convinced me. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could drop a like on it, show support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions on this. What are you looking forward to most from this upcoming season of Stargirl and everything like that? Any theories you want to add? Feel free. And um, yeah, and of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I will catch you guys later. Goodbye.